built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part 21 of the GWR Great Western Prairie Tank Scratch Build. And we're set up in the lathe now, uh, ready to start the next part of the boiler fabrication. What I'll be doing next is making the outer wrapper for the for the boiler, and this is the part the part that this sits inside is the outer wrapper. And I've got some tube of the right diameter for the outer part of the firebox mounted in the lathe. And what I've also done is I've supported it with copper tube because what we need to do is we need to trim the end of this to get this as a nice a nice finish. And you can't just put a piece of copper tube in a chuck like that and squeeze it because it will collapse and you have to support it. So I use these wooden these wooden blanks to, these are just the right diameter of the tube, pop those in and support them with a central bar fixed on the fixed on the end of the tailstock there just to support it and keep everything true. Otherwise it would be very very difficult to trim up the end of this um, this copper tube to get it nice and square. Okay so not a very big cut I'm going to take off. It's really just to skim the end of this copper tube. So let's go. As I mentioned a couple of times, copper is very very soft and it's a very sticky material to work with as well. So here's what we have now. We've got this end all nicely trimmed off and all nice and square and you can see a bit better this arrangement that I use for turning copper tubes and this keeps it all in shape when I grip it in the chuck so I have to now remove this from our from our tube now all right so, so what we're looking to do, here's our, our firebox with the copper tubes, the boiler tubes sitting in our firebox, approximately looks like this, and they all go in there and they go off. Right. So the plan for this episode is to make the wrapper that fits around the outside and because we're using a taper boiler it's only going to go to about this length imagine if you're looking through it and then what goes off here then will be the rest of the boiler Oops, the rest of the boiler which is tapered so all this ultimately is where the water will be and so we have the flames obviously the flames in there but this is the part I'm going to do now so we need to cut this now and say to our three inch three and a half inch length I think marked it out the three and a half inches in length and ready to start cutting and as mentioned a couple of times, one of the trickiest things you find with copper, especially copper tube, is being able to hold it without pinching it or distorting it. Because once, if this was to get distorted or bent or squeezed, it would be quite tricky, quite a nuisance to try and straighten it out again. So I found this works quite well for me. Just the tube held in with some duct tape, pretty tight on there, in this little holder. Quite crude but effective and it works quite well. So I will gently start to cut round 
this pipe leaving plenty of meat enough material to trim off and so you've just got to take this very steady to cut round and obviously keep an eye on where the cut is going you don't need to wander in and take off too much material so just gently is the way to do it Okay, there we are. And do remember to press the like button and hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, it helps just to support the channel and it's very much appreciated. So I'll just put my support plugs back in on this end and the other one still in its position. That needs to probably be moved up a little higher. Now we've got our three inch length and what I've done is mark this out. I'm not sure if you can see that there. Oh, there's the light catching it. But I've marked this section out here and across there. And what we've got to do, what I'll be doing, and this is the fun part now, is we need to cut down the middle, cut down the middle here and peel back these flaps and once we peel back these flaps the firebox will slide into there and these flaps will be riveted onto the firebox. Now first thing to do is to cut this while the copper is still quite quite hard what I will do is cut down the middle make a cut down the middle here and a cut across there and then I'll anneal it and it will make it a lot easier to create these flaps either side to create the cutout. So, gently, gently, I cut down right down the centre now, very carefully, I'm trying to make these flaps equal. The first thing to do is to cut a slit down here. So this is a gentle job with the hacksaw. Oops. And you've just got to take this very very steady to cut right down here. Now it's quite important and this line, this cut finishes exactly at the cross point of the cross where this other line scribes through. Not to go past, it's going to stop exactly at that point. Have to take it very carefully up to it. A little bit more. So what I would normally do here now is just finish this off with vertical cuts. So at the moment, with me cutting that way, the cut is at an angle. Well, we've still got copper to remove here, but I don't want the cut to go any further from this point. I uh, see this is what I mean about where the cut has to finish. That blade, that cut, has to be there so we get a a nice 90 degree cut there. So we start our our cut again very gently. We do this too big and have too big a gaps and starts to get a bit fiddly. I've made the cut now, down the length we want, I made a cross cut as well and I've taken the depth of this cut just slightly past where this line is that I've marked, I've done the same here because this accounts for the thickness of this metal as we peel it back. 
the original scribe lines were just for the width of the firebox but not to bend it back plus the thickness of this metal we needed a little bit more so I will anneal this again it's going to make the copper easier to work and exactly the same as you've seen me before just heat it up to a bright red and this will now become nice and workable right here's our wrapper the outer wrapper and so we've finished off we left where we'd um, annealed it and let that cool down and we're now ready to start the metal bending now what I've got to do is peel back these two these two flaps and it's a case of really just coaxing it round gently by whatever method you have and just to ease this ease this piece round and so I've got it crudely clamped let's look for another tool, maybe get some pliers in there and just ease this round, but this is, whoops this is what I have to do just bend it round gently just to start this off and try any tool at my disposal just to get this going As you can see, I'm really just concentrating on this flap here at the moment. Once we get that wide enough, I can begin to get my bigger pliers in there. Like so. And what I'm doing, the, the, where I'm bending it back to, the line I scribed, I'm bending it a little bit further back from that line because this is allowing the material thickness. That's not looking too bad, it's starting to take shape. And also, with this being annealed, you see it's fairly easy to bend what we want. So it's not to be bent right out. That's probably not far off. We might have to come back and revisit that a little bit when I've done the other side. But that's the start of it. And also, so this is where I'm peeling it back right to that point where the saw cut is. Might have to come back a little touch more and another little tool just to bend this back. Knock this around. That's probably not far off where it needs to be. And um, what I'll do now is just take this off, set this sort of crude clamp up on the other side and bend this other flap back. After a little bit of uh, bending and coaxing you can see the shape that we've finished up with and what I've done is those little formers I used earlier on to when I, um, a while ago when I was turning this in a lathe They've come in handy again to keep this nice and round to actually keep its shape. Otherwise it would be very very easy to knock and distort this out of its true circular shape. So where we're up to now you can see this is our, is our uh, firebox and this will, this fits in here. So that's not too far out. So I'm just going to use that as a guide now just to just to um, squeeze that down a little bit more. It's uh, out a little bit too much at the moment. So these 
faces just need pinching in just a tad more to make a nice uh, to make a nice snug fit on here. So I should just tweak these in the vise. So bend them in. Right, after a little bit more fettling, we've got it looking pretty much how we were, how I want it to look now. This sits. This end sits nice and flush to the end of that. It has to do that. There's a little tiny sliver we can take off just to blend it once it's finally welded in, uh, finally silver soldered in. But that's how the inner firebox fits to the outer wrapper. And what I will be doing is riveting this in and then silver soldering all along this seam, uh, both sides and we'll also be silver soldering along here. But now, say looking down the, if you like looking down the barrel there, there's the water tubes, firebox this way. Um, turn it round and you can just have a look inside and you can see this is where the, where the water will be and the cross tubes that are going to be heating this water as well. So I will now, now I'm going to go and rivet these on and uh, prepare this for silver soldering next. Here we are, all riveted together now, ready to be silver soldered. Okay, we're all set up now in the hearth, ready to silver solder. We're going to silver solder along this joint here and down the sides and down these sides here and I've got a little bit of insulation packing just stuffed in just to help keep the heat in a little bit so we shall light the torch and start soldering part of the silver soldering completed and we've now got our firebox with the water tubes all silver soldered into position and that in terms of the way the the solder has flowed that looks looks pretty reasonable but we'll only find out once we put it under pressure if there's any leaks there but uh, it might leak it might not do we'll see and the other thing I've fitted is a little bush on here. I'm going to silver solder this in again later um, when I set up this part for the for the for the boiler. But this is a bush for the steam takeoff, and this goes to the steam manifold. And I think it's sometimes called a steam tree, but there will be a, a takeoff here that will go to the um, to the steam steam inlets. And it will be for the regulator, so the regulator will be fed from here, and also the blower will take its steam from here. But um, that's where we are on this latest episode, and the next episode we'll be continuing on with the boiler, and we'll now be doing the tapered part of the boiler and the boiler, uh, the boiler tube end plate on here as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you like it. If you have, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And hopefully we'll see you again for the next episode.